I'm Victor Brown from Seattle, Washington. I just felt like I'd like to get a, a little report of things that have been happening in Seattle, seen it continue in Portland. Go back a little bit. First of all, because I want to express my appreciation for being here, my respect for the ministry that gave me the keys of understanding. I don't want to appear as though I was getting something for myself. I've told people I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing about the Bible if the ministry hadn't given me the keys. I explained to somebody the other day, it's like coming up and say, you got something there in your warehouse I'd like to have. Will you go get it for me? He said, no, I'm not going to go get it for you. Here's the keys. Go on and get it yourself. Well, that's about the way it is. I've made it a point to come here to Houston a couple of times when there wasn't a convention, see how they operate when there isn't a convention, stayed in some of the homes to observe the people. See, Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Uh, I don't go all together by numbers. I've heard it said all my life, a crab apple tree always has more apples on it than a, uh, than a good quality tree, but when you see as many apples, good apples on a tree as there would normally be crab apples, why, <laughs> then you start to take notice. Oh, uh, what I had in mind goes back a few months. For quite a while now, the Spirit of God has been moving in Seattle Assembly, a great wave, so much so that uh, sometimes half the assembly would wind up on the floor. I got thinking one day here, uh, what is the purpose of it? What good is it doing? Uh, and my first impression was this, I remembered going to high school, I took electric shop, and the instructor, one of the first things he'd done was to have us join hands and uh, man on each end and get a hold of the terminal of a, a generator made up out of a old Ford spark coil. Some of you older men will under, uh, appreciate that. And it had a crank on it. And the, the faster you turned the crank, the more voltage it produced. And each day, he would crank that uh, a little more. Now, we didn't realize what he was doing then, but he was trying to get us used to electric shock. Uh, so that if we accidentally got a shock that wouldn't kill us, we'd be used to taking the shock. And I thought, uh, how like God. I told the people, God is trying to get us used to handling the Spirit of God because the amount of the Spirit of God that we'll have to handle to get uh, the job done that needs to be done is so much greater than we've been used to that it might kill us. Then another picture was uh, like a man drilling an oil well, and he hits a gusher. Well, all of that oil coming out of that well is doing nothing but polluting the uh, the countryside until you get the you get the well capped. Uh, it was seen, uh, seems that we need to cap the well. And then I thought of a visit that I had made to my niece's place, and she had a little gadget laying on the coffee table. I picked it up and looked at it. Had a crank on it, and two blocks of wood uh, made out of a square block of wood, about six inches square, and had a groove cut in an X shape, uh, kind of keyed in there, and a block of wood in each one of these grooves. And you turn the, turn the crank, and that block of wood would go from one side to the other, past each other. Uh, what struck me was the name uh, that was on the gadget, said a genuine Ozark do-nothing. A lot of action, worked smooth, but it didn't accomplish anything. And uh, we don't want that. We don't want to waste the Spirit of God. So I told the people that what we ought to do is begin to pray that 
that God will channel his spirit and we'll see it begin to operate the gifts of the spirit because they all are operated according to the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. The gifts are operated by the Holy Ghost. But when we begin to pray, pray earnestly that God would channel the Holy Ghost, some strange things began to happen. People began to come to me with their problems. And I began to search for answers for the problem. And, uh, well, for, to begin with, I began to understand human nature, where they came from, but that didn't remedy the situation. God gave us an understanding, we searched, see what made people tick, uh, but it didn't solve the problem. We realized that no matter how much you know about human nature, no matter how much you know about where things begin, if God doesn't supply the Holy Ghost to remedy it, all of your knowledge is worthless. But if God, through the Holy Ghost, gives you the operation and you see people delivered from their problems, then that, that makes all the difference in the world. And God didn't do that until we realized that, just like Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. I don't care how smart you get, you might know what, uh, all about how people are formed and their character and what causes their hang-ups and everything else. If there isn't that uh, accompanying spirit of God along with it to remedy it, it doesn't do it much good. But I'd just like to uh, go through some of the things that i uh, begun to understand. I testified to some things that were beginning to happen in the Paducah meeting. I'd like to repeat it. Some of you weren't there. Uh, two weeks before the Paducah meeting, on Sunday evening, the, well, a couple sang a song, and the Spirit of God moved in right then. And people began to rejoice in the Spirit. One uh, young lady, about 15, came up to me and told me that she was having trouble submitting to her mother and uh, her stepmother. Uh, two couples married, both of them had children uh, from homes that were broken up through, because of adultery, and these two got married. Uh, the lady, she had a, a boy about 12 or 13, and the man had, a, had this one girl, about 15 now, and another one about 11, and another one eight, three girls, and the other... Uh, the woman had, or rather the man had three daughters. But she came to me telling me that she had had trouble submitting to her stepmother, and she had gone home to her natural mother, and her, it wound up with her natural mother telling her that she didn't want anything to do with her anymore. And she came back to her father's and was using that hurt that rejection as a cover-up, an excuse to be a regular rebel, just as stinking as she could be. And uh, so I talked to her a little bit. I said, now God's given you a family, and you can't let this disappointment react that way. And uh, I prayed for her. Spirit of God hit her, and she went down on the floor. I waited for a little bit. In the meantime, the Spirit of God was touching the whole assembly. Uh, a few minutes later, I felt like going down and talking to her. So I told her that uh, God had given her a mother, and he also given her a family in looking around at the assembly. And I said, you're going to have to let this spirit go. Talk to her a little bit. I told her, let it go. And pretty soon I, I 
real strong and said, let it go. I commanded her to let it go. And she let that spirit, that bitter spirit go. And the uh, expression came on her face, altogether different. She was free from it. She got up and walked to the back of the church, started out real wobbly. As she, and then she turned around, came up to the front of the church, turned around, walked back to the back of the church again, and halfway back in the aisle, her stepmother was standing in the aisle, and she walked up, put her arms around her. I walked back to her and said to her, Now, this is the mother that the Lord has given you. Can you call her mother? So he called her mother, and in the meantime, her little sister, she's about eight, she's had the Holy Ghost for about two years, she was on the floor just rejoicing in the Spirit. She got up off of the floor and went around and uh, started laying hands on people. And when she touched them, the uh, Spirit of God would hit them and they uh, fall out of their seat onto the floor. Then she went and got her uh, stepbrother, and uh, brought him to her father, then went and got her sister, and brought them all together, the man and the woman, and God put that family together right there. God put it together. And while all this was happening, Brother Bill Livermore's boy, about 12, I guess, got the Holy Ghost. Brother Tom Powell, Another man, his son got the Holy Ghost, and uh, another young man, uh, Gary Wilson, his son received the Holy Ghost while this was all going on. Then the following Sunday, one song was sung, the Spirit of God moved in again, and for about two and a half hours, God was dealing with problems. But this time, uh, the Holy Ghost was present and let me see where these problems started and uh, lay hands on them, the Spirit of God would relieve them, and then one after another deliver from the problems. I began to uh, look into things and sort of line out what I had found out, and it's all helped in order to get these people free from their uh, problems. Now, if we uh, took each one here individually, most of us have problems. I don't know. Just most people have problems. Now, if we took it individually, why, it it take so much time that, we, well, we just wouldn't have enough time to deal with each person individually. Uh, then, last weekend, Thanksgiving Day, we went, went down to Portland, and God worked, uh, worked some beautiful things to get us there, and in fact, uh, changed the weather. Uh, Thursday morning, I was planning on going down to uh, Portland. Wednesday evening, the weatherman was forecasting snow, impassable conditions, I-5, the main route from Seattle to Portland would be impassable, snow, blizzard conditions, and the wife said, maybe you better call up Brother Baxter and tell him you won't be there. No, I said, everything's going to be all right in the morning. We're having a meeting in Portland. Well, that storm that they was predicting for Thursday morning, stopped out at the coast. And I drove to Portland on bare, sea, uh, bare pavement. Then Saturday, that storm that was predicted for Thursday morning moved in, and it was supposed to last till uh, Sunday evening. And some of them got kind of anxious. They wanted to get home during the daylight so they wouldn't have to drive over the snow in the night. But I... Well, before I knew this, I called my wife up. I decided to stay over for the Sunday meeting at Portland. 